Hey guys, good evening and welcome back again to your An Academy Need English channel. I hope all of you are in great, having a good time. So my dear students, quickly, let me know in the chats if all of you can hear me, if I'm perfectly audible, visible to everyone. Let me know quickly in the chats if all of you can hear me properly, if I'm perfectly audible and visible to every one of you. Quickly, my dear students in the chats, every one of you, every one of you, every one of you, quickly. Yes? Am I perfectly audible visible? Am I perfectly audible visible? Can you all hear me properly? I know all of you are super duper excited about this particular session. Yeah. Okay, tell me honestly, whatever chapters I have completed on YouTube through this neat conquer bat, have you watched all the chapters? You can tell me honestly with a yes or no. Have you almost completed all the chapters? <laughs> have you almost completed all the chapters? I just want to know that. Let me know once in the chats. Perfect. Good evening. Good evening, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. Not all the chapters, to be honest. Yeah, I know. I know that. I know that. So try to complete all the chapters from the Neat Conquer Batch playlist. Right? That is, I mean, all the chapters are there in the playlist. On this particular channel itself, try to complete all the chapters. Because whatever I have taught, on this particular channel, every single thing is given in the detailed format. Everything is given in the detailed format. Nothing is going to be asked out of those things which I've taught. Okay? Perfect, guys. So, today we are going to start the organic chemistry. And this is going to be the first session of your organic chemistry, my dear students. The first chapter which we are going to start today, that is going to be the general organic chemistry, which forms which forms the basis of your entire organic chemistry. Okay? And this particular GOC, this particular general organic chemistry, which forms the basis of your entire organic chemistry. My dear students, I'll be completing this particular chapter in five to six sessions. Five to six sessions I'll take and I'll try to complete all this GOC in detail, right from the basics, right from the scratch. If you have studied the chapter before or not, does not matter at all. Right? I'll be starting exactly from the basics. Perfect. So before starting this particular session, the ones who have not liked the session yet, I would want every one of you to like this session. Do share this video with everyone. Whosoever is preparing for the NEET 2024 examination or even 2025 examination, right? Do share this with everyone. Let everybody get benefited out of the quality sessions which we take on this particular channel, your An Academy in English. And at the same time, the ones who have not subscribed to the channel yet, the ones who have not subscribed to the channel yet. I would want every one of you, I would want every one of you to subscribe to the channel right now. Okay? Yes? See, students have started writing, sir, can you do this chapter, that chapter? Guys, wait. Let's try to complete this first and after that, I'm here only. I'm not leaving anywhere. Okay? I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. I'm here only. Is the audio video all okay? People are saying it's buffering. Is the audio video all okay? Completely fine? Yeah? Yes, you can consult this lecture for your JE preparation as well. No issues. Audio video all okay? Quickly, quickly in the chats. Perfect people. All right. Let's get going then. Let's get started without wasting a lot of our time. Let's get going. And the session duration will be two to two and a half hours. I would want every one of you to be with me till the end. Right? I would want you guys to be with me till the end. Two hours, maximum two and a half hours. Right? And my dear students, what exactly we are going to discuss today? 
my dear students let me tell you we are going to start as i told you we are going to start from the basics so the first topic in the organic chemistry it is going to be iupac nomenclature and it's a one shot session basically it is a one shot session so in the today's session complete iupac nomenclature i'm going to teach you right from the basics so wherever wherever in the organic chemistry you guys have the nomenclature right all the things i'll be discussing here only in the today's session so are you all ready for it are you all ready for it just two hours to maximum two and a half hours right your complete iupac nomenclature will be done and dusted my dear students okay and just take out your notebook perfect and be ready with the pen and paper and try to answer all the questions which I'm going to ask you in the today's session. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. And you guys are going to let me know the answers in the chats, my dear students. Okay? Perfect, people. So let's get going then. Let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. So quickly, let me show it. Let me tell you the flow of the today's session. Let me tell you the flow of the today's session. From where we are going to start and till where we are going to reach. First of all, we'll be starting with the nomenclature of alkanes. Then we are going to discuss the nomenclature of alkenes. Right? Then we shall be discussing the nomenclature of alkynes. Then we shall be discussing the nomenclature of cyclic compounds, spiro compounds, bicyclo compounds, and compounds containing the functional groups compounds containing the functional groups so this is this is going to be our today's session flow my dear students we shall be starting with the alkanes then alkenes alkynes cyclic compounds spiro compounds bicyclo compounds and the compounds containing the functional groups right so let's get going then let's get started with the nomenclature of alkanes with the nomenclature of alkanes i am not going to give you a lot of rules let me tell you that honestly right now i'm sure you would have studied a lot of rules in IUPAC nomenclature. I'll just give you like three to four rules which you have to remember and I'm 100% sure you can name all the compounds in your organic chemistry for sure. Right? So starting from the exact basics. My dear students, the first, the first rule which you have to remember from now onwards. Whenever you try to name any organic compound as per new IUPAC, Whenever you try to name any organic compound, the first and the most important rule is you have to select the longest possible carbon chain. This is the first rule which you guys are going to remember. Select the longest possible carbon chain. This has to be always your first step. Right? This has to be always your first step. Whenever you try to name any organic compound, you have to select the longest possible carbon chain. Okay? For example, how do we select the longest possible carbon chain? Why do your students try to understand? First of all, I'm sure you would have studied this particular notation. If not, let me tell you this is your CH3. This is CH2. This is CH2. This is CH2. CH2. This is CH3. Right? Sorry, this is CH. This is CH2. And this is CH3. I'm sure this kind of notation, every one of you would be already knowing. Right? Perfect. So these terminal carbons, these terminal carbons are your CH3, right? Okay, this is CH2, 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 this will be CH, right? This will be CH2, this will be CH3. Now, my dear students, the first rule says that you have to select the longest possible carbon chain. Now, if I ask you, what do you think? Which one is going to be the longest possible carbon chain here? It's very simple. Have a look. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Can I say this is going to be the longest possible carbon chain here? Right? This is going to be the longest possible carbon chain here. So you are going to select this particular chain as per rule number one. Look at this particular compound. If I ask you select the longest possible carbon chain here. Select the longest possible carbon chain here. My dear students, as far as I see the compound, the longest possible carbon chain will contain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, right? So this is going to be your longest possible carbon chain in this particular compound. As simple as that, right? Look at this particular compound. In this particular compound, what do you think is going to be our longest possible carbon chain? 
have a look. If I start from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? 10 carbon atoms in this particular chain, if I select this one. But if you select the other one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So if I select this particular carbon chain, this carbon chain contains the maximum number of carbon atoms. So this is going to be my longest possible carbon chain over here in this particular compound. So your first rule, which you are going to remember from now onwards, when you try to name an organic compound, you have to select the longest possible carbon chain in the compound. As simple as that, right? This is your rule number one. My dear students, my dear students, now there comes a point. The point is, if more carbon chains are multiple in number, if more carbon chains are multiple in number, then select the chain with maximum number of branches. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, look what it exactly means. See, over here, I've taken a compound. The same compound I've repeated here. The same compound I've repeated here. Try to understand what exactly I'm going to talk about. My dear students, in this particular compound, if you select this particular carbon chain, in this carbon chain, how many carbon atoms do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. In this chain, I've got 6 carbon atoms. As simple as that. Now, people, over here, if I select this as the carbon chain, if I select this as the carbon chain, how many carbon atoms do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Here also, we have got 6 carbon atoms. Here also, we have got 6 carbon atoms. Now, which chain is going to be my parent chain over here? Which chain do I need to select over here? Which chain do I need to select over here? My dear students, over here, I have selected two carbon chains. And both the carbon chains are containing six carbon atoms. Now, you will be selecting that chain as the main chain. You will be selecting that chain as the parent chain, which will contain more branches. Which will contain more branches. Right? Over here in this particular chain, how many branches are there? There is only one branch, right? If you select this as the chain, there are one and this is two. There are two branches, right? So which chain you are going to select over here? Which one is going to be your main chain? The chain which I've selected here, that is going to be your parent chain, which you guys are going to select. As simple as that, right? Perfect. Now, look at this particular compound. Look at this particular compound. What I can do over here is, I can select this as the main chain. If you select this as the main chain, how many carbon atoms are there in the main chain? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? 8 carbon atoms. 8 carbon atoms. Now, my dear students, if I select this as the main chain, try to understand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. If I select this as the main chain over here, again, how many carbon atoms do we have? You have got 8 carbon atoms in the main chain. Perfect. Now, which one? Am I going to prioritize? Should I be calling this particular chain as the parent chain over here? Or the first one? Which chain am I going to select? My dear students, over here, the chain which I've selected, it contains eight carbon atoms. The chain which I've selected here, again, it contains eight carbon atoms. Now, which chain do I need to prioritize? Which is going to be my parent chain? That chain is going to be my parent chain, which contains maximum number of branches. Over here, how many branches do we have? This is the first branch. This is the second branch. Only two branches. Look at this one. Look at this one. This will be my first branch. This is my second branch. Here you have got the third branch. Here you have got four branches. So this particular chain has got four branches. So this second chain is going to be my parent chain, which I'm going to consider over here. Right? As simple as that. So my dear students, remember this particular statement. If more carbon chains are multiple in number, if more carbon chains are multiple in number, then select that chain which contains maximum number of brands, as simple as that. I hope you got to know exactly, I hope you got to know exactly how to select the longest possible carbon chain, right? My dear students, once you are done selecting the longest possible carbon chain, the second rule says that you have to start numbering. You have to give numbering to the carbon atoms in the main chain. And how you are going to do the numbering? Try to understand. The rule says, first locant should get the minimum number. First locant should get the minimum number. My dear students, look at this particular compound. Look at this particular compound. First of all, I'm going to select the 
longest possible carbon chain. Let's assume this is my longest possible carbon chain over here, right? This is my longest possible carbon chain. Now I've got two ways to do the numbering. Either I'll do the numbering from left to right, or I'll do the numbering from right to left. Two possibilities I have. If I do the numbering from left to right, this is going to be one, this will be two, this will be three, carbon number four, carbon number five, right? Now, if I do the numbering from right to left, from right to left, this is going to be one, carbon number one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four, this will be five. Perfect. My dear students, if I do the numbering from, if I do the numbering from left to right, left to right, left to right, the first locant is getting number four. The first locant is getting number four. If I do the numbering from right to left, the first locant over here is getting number two. The first locant is getting the number two. The rule says first locant should always get the minimum number, right? First locant should get the minimum number. So where is the first locant getting the minimum number? In the second case. So you will do the numbering from right to left. As simple as that, right? As simple as that. In this particular case, you will be selecting the longest possible carbon chain. And after that, you'll start the numbering. Now you have got two ways, either to start the numbering from left to right or to do the numbering from right to left. Now let's try to understand how to do the numbering exactly. If I start the numbering from left to right, this is going to be carbon number one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven, right? So the first locant over here is getting number five. First locant over here is getting number five, okay? If you start the numbering from right to left, if you start the numbering from right to left, from right to left, this is going to be one, this will be two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If you start the numbering from right to left, then the first locant is getting number two. And the rule says first locant always should get the minimum number. So you'll be giving the numbering, you'll start the numbering from right to what is the left. Done and dusted. Look at the next case. Look at the next case. Again, you have got two possibilities. Start from left to right. If you start from left to right, what is going to be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? The first locant over here is getting number four. The first locant is getting number four. Now do the numbering from right to left, right to left. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If you do the numbering from right to left, the first locant is getting number two. Right to left, the first locant is getting number two. And the first locant always should get the minimum number. So you will give the numbering from right to left. So my dear students, number one, number one, number one, try to understand. First of all, you have to select the longest possible carbon chain, right? You have to select the longest possible carbon chain in the compound. Perfect. Now, for example, if you are able to select more than one longest possible carbon chain, if you are able to select more than one longest possible carbon chain, then prioritize that carbon chain which contains more branches. Once you are done selecting the longest possible carbon chain, you will have to do the numbering of the atoms of the carbon atoms in the chain. How to do the numbering? First thing, first locant always should get the minimum number. This has to be in your mind all the time. First locant always has to get the minimum number. Perfect. You'll be prioritizing that. Now, my dear students, try to understand a few more things. As I told you, first locant always has to get the minimum number. Right? Now comes one more point. If first locant, if first locant is same, then go for the lowest sum rule. For example, you are unable to decide with the help of first locant. If you are unable to decide with the help of first locant, then you are going to follow the lowest sum rule. What this lowest sum rule is all about? Let's have a look. Let's have a look, have a look people. First of all, let me start the numbering from left to right. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? The first locant, the first locant, the first substituent is getting the number two. The second substituent is at number three. Right? The third substituent is at number six. Perfect. Now, if I start the numbering from right to left, this will be one, this will be two, this will be three, four, five, six, and seven. Perfect. The first substituent is getting number two. The second substituent is getting number five. And the third substituent is getting number six. Perfect. The third substituent is getting number six. So I've written the locants over here. Now try to understand. The first locant here is getting number two. Here also the first locant is getting number two. So you are unable to decide with the help of the first locant rule. Now, which rule you are going to use? The lowest sum rule. Take the sum of these things. 639 plus 2, 11. So the sum of these locants is 11. 
here the sum is 6 5 11 to 13 the sum is 13 my dear students so wherever the sum will be the least that is going to be the actual order of the numbering the sum is least here so this is going to be the actual order of numbering perfect so my dear students whenever you have to start giving numbering to a carbon chain first go for the first locant rule the first locant should get the minimum number if you are unable to decide from that then go for the lowest sum rule right some of the locants has to be minimum. Some of the locants has to be minimum. Right? Some of the locants has to be minimum. My dear students, if you are unable to decide on the basis of lowest sum rule as well, if you are unable to decide on the basis of lowest sum rule as well, then what do we have to do? What do we have to do? We have to follow the alphabetical order. We have to follow the alphabetical order. What does that mean? Try to understand. First thing, let me start the numbering from here. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, and 7. Left to right, I've started the numbering. Perfect. Now again, from right to left. This is 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Perfect. These are two ways I can do the numbering. Now look at this particular case. The first substituent is at third position. Second substituent is at fifth position. Right? Second substituent is at fifth position. Perfect. Similarly, look here. Look here. The first substituent is at third position. The second substituent is at fifth position. Perfect. Look at the first locants. The over here, the value is three. The value is three here. So you cannot decide on the base of the first locant. Now, what you are going to do? You are going to use the lowest sum rule. Five plus three is eight. Five plus three is eight. So you are unable to decide on the base of the lowest sum rule as well. Now, what is left? Now you are going to follow the alphabetical order. What alphabetical order exactly? Hey guys, this is basically your CH3 here. This is methyl group. This is methyl group. This is CH2, CH3. CH2, CH3 means C to H5. This is your ethyl group, right? This is your ethyl group. This is, here you have got methyl group. Here methyl group is attached and here ethyl group is attached. Perfect. Now, methyl starts with M. Ethyl starts with E alphabetically in the alphabetical order which letter comes before m or e e comes before so give priority to ethyl give priority to ethyl so ethyl should get the minimum number ethyl should get the minimum number if you are doing the numbering from left to right then ethyl is getting number five if you are giving the numbering from right to left then ethyl is getting number three so this particular numbering is correct over here got it as simple as that i hope it's clear I hope it's clear, right? I hope it's clear. Now guys, this is the basic structure. This is the basic structure, which I'm sure all of you must be knowing. Word root, primary suffix, secondary suffix, prefix, etc, etc. Let me not go into the details of it. Let me exactly show how do we utilize it. How do we utilize it? By the way, do you know this particular thing? For carbon number one, we use the word root myth. Carbon number two, eighth. Carbon number three, prop. Carbon number four, four carbon atoms means but, pent, hept, etc, etc. Right? You must be knowing all this. Something which you study in your class 10th basically. If there are 10 carbon atoms in the main chain, the word root is going to be deck. 11 carbon atoms in the main chain, word root, undeck. 12 carbon atoms, dodeck, prideck, tetradeck, pentadeck, hexadeck. Right? 20 carbon atoms in the main chain, icos, word root is going to be icos. Let's try to utilize all these things and let's get to know whether we are able to name some basic base compounds or not. Have a look, people. Have a, have a look. Have a look, people. Try to understand. Look at this particular compound. What should be its name? It is the simplest. This is carbon number one. This is two. This is three. This is four. Perfect. Main chain is selected. Numbering is done. Numbering is done. Based on the rules which we have discussed till now. Now, at carbon number 2, you have got methyl group. So, it's going to be 2. It's going to be 2 methyl. Let me tell you, number and letter. Number and letter separated by dash. Hyphen. Number and letter separated by hyphen. Right? So, it's going to be 2 methyl. In the main chain, there are 4 carbon atoms. So, it's going to be but. Everywhere, it's a single bond. So, it's going to be an. This is going to be the name of the compound. Simple. Look at the second one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. 
six carbon atoms in the main chain. At carbon number two, you've got methyl group. So what should be the name? It's going to be two methyl. It's going to be two methyl and it's going to be hexane. H-E-X hex. -E Everywhere there is a single bond. So it's going to be A. As simple as that. These are some basic, basic compounds which I'm giving you. You keep on telling me in the charts continuously. Continuously the chart should rotate. Right? Look at this particular case. Let's start the numbering from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now, now have a look. At carbon number 2, there is a methyl group. At carbon number 5, there is again a methyl group. So how many methyl groups we have? We have got two methyl groups. We have got two methyl groups over here. Perfect. We have got two methyl groups over here. So what should be the name of this particular compound? At carbon number 2, at carbon number 2 and at carbon number 5, we have got two methyl groups. Two numbers are separated by comma. Two numbers are separated by comma. So it's going to be 2 comma 5. Now, how many methyl groups? Two methyl groups. So it's going to be dimethyl. It's going to be dimethyl. Dimethyl. Tell me how many carbon atoms in the main chain? Six carbon atoms in the main chain. So word root hex. Everywhere is a single bond. If it is a single bond, so in I'm going to use. So 2 comma 5 dimethyl hexane is going to be the name of this particular compound. Simple and basic. Right? Darshini, HSP sir is also here. HSP sir is also here. It is just, it has been long. I have been teaching physical, right? So I thought of taking some chapters of organic. Similarly, HSP sir, it's been long. He has been taking organic. So he'll be also taking some chapters of physical. Just to change. Just for a change. And it's completely your wish to follow the lectures. Okay? Right? HSP sir is here only. He is here only. He is not, I am not going to leave him at any cost. Okay? He is here only. He is the god of organic. He will, will remain the god of organic. Okay? It is just, I am also trying a bit. Just to make you understand. Right? Okay. Look at this particular case. Look at this particular case. Try to name this particular compound. Have a look people. Have a look. You have to start the numbering first of all. Start the numbering. Will you start the numbering from left to right or right to left? If I start the numbering from left to right, then the first locant will be getting number 3. If I start the numbering from right to left, then first locant will get number 2. First locant should get the minimum number, right? Let me call this as carbon number 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, this is 6. Perfect. So my dear students, try to understand. At carbon number 2, you have got a methyl group. You have got a methyl group. At carbon number 4, this is CH2, CH3. CH2, CH3 means C2H5. So this is ethyl group. This is ethyl. This is methyl group. This is ethyl group. Right? Now, should I write methyl first or should I write ethyl first? Methyl starts with M. Ethyl starts with E. In the alphabetical order, E comes before M. So I'll prioritize ethyl first while writing the name. So it has to be, it has to be 4 ethyl. It has to be 4 ethyl. 4 ethyl, 2 methyl. 4 ethyl, 2 methyl. Then in the main chain, 6 carbon atoms. So the word root is hex. Everywhere there's a single bond. So it's going to be in everywhere. So this is the name of the compound. As simple as that. Right? Yes? Now, my dear students, look at this particular case. Start the numbering. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Perfect. Add carbon number 2. Methyl. At carbon number 3, methyl. At carbon number 4, ethyl. Perfect. Methyl starts with M. Ethyl starts with E. Prioritize ethyl. Prioritize ethyl. So it's going to be, at carbon number 4, you have got ethyl. So it's going to be 4 ethyl. 4 ethyl. Now it's going to be 2 comma 3 dimethyl. It's going to be 2 comma 3. It's going to be dimethyl. Dimethyl. In the parent chain, how many carbon atoms? Seven carbon atoms. So the word root, word root is hept. Word root is hept. Everywhere in the main chain, it's a single bond. So I'll be using ain over here. So this is going to be the name of the compound. Simple. You keep on telling me the names in the chats. I want everyone to write the names in the chats continuously. Right? Do not wait for me. You, you write your answer. You write your answer. Because these are the basic, basic compounds which I've started with. Slowly, slowly you will see how I'll scale up the level of the questions. Right? See guys, look at this particular one. Look at this particular one. Start the numbering from here. 1, 2, this is 3, 4, 5 and 6. 
At carbon number three, it's ethyl. At carbon number four, it's again ethyl. So it is going to be basically three comma four, three comma four diethyl, three comma four diethyl in the main chain six carbon atoms. So it's going to be hex everywhere single bond. So it's going to be in perfect. As simple as that. As simple as that. Now, guys, whatever substituents were attached with the main chain, they were either methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, right? Simple substituents were attached till now. Now, there can be complex substituents attached to the main chain as well. Let's say this is your main chain over here. This is your main chain over here. Have a look. Carbon number one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven, right? This is your main chain. This is your main chain. Now, in this particular main chain, towards this main chain, a complex substituent is attached. This is not a simple substituent. This is not a methyl. This is not ethyl. This is not propyl. It's a complex substituent. How do we name a complex substituent? Try to understand. Try to understand how do we name it. First of all, at carbon number 4, we have got a complex substituent. At carbon number 4, we have got a complex substituent. Now, first thing, I'll name this complex substituent. How exactly am I going to name this complex substituent? My dear students, in the complex substituent, again I'll start the numbering. In the complex substituent, again I'll be starting the numbering. Let me call this as carbon number 1. Let me call this as carbon number 2. Right? Now, at this particular carbon, there's a methyl group. There's a methyl group. So I'll write 4 dash bracket. 4 dash bracket. At carbon number 1, what do we have? We have got methyl. At carbon number 1, we have got methyl. This is going to be 2 carbon atoms means it's going to be ethyl. It's going to be ethyl. At carbon number 4, you have got a complex substituent. In the complex substituent at 1, at position 1, methyl ethyl. Methyl ethyl. In the main chain, 7 carbon atoms. So it's going to be hept. Everywhere is a single bond. So it's going to be hept in. So this is going to be the name of the compound. As simple as that. Right? Perfecto. Right, people? Now comes a point. Let's assume in the main chain, towards the main chain, there are two same complex substituents attached. Let's say there are two same complex substituents attached. Three same complex substituents attached. Four same complex substituents attached. Remember, if there are two same complex substituents attached, you'll be using the term bis. Three same complex substituents, you'll be using the term tris. Four same complex substituents attached, you'll be using the term tetrakis. Right? Five Com five same complex substituents attached, you'll be using the term pentakis and so on. And so on. Now, try to understand how exactly am I going to name this particular compound. Calling this, for example, as carbon number one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, six, seven, eight, and nine. In the main chain, nine carbon atoms, right? Here you have got a complex substituent. Here you have got a complex substituent. Are the complex substituents identical? Absolutely, the complex substituents are identical. How many identical complex substituents we have? Two. So I'll be using the term bis. I'll be using the term bis. I'll be using the term bis. Right? So my dear students, how you are going to name it? I'll be using the term bis. I've used the term bis. Perfect. Now at carbon number four, at carbon number four and five, at carbon number four and five, two same, subs, two same complex substituents were there. So it's going to be four comma five bis. Four comma five bis. Right? Now, how do we name a complex substituent? In the complex substituent, again, you have to start the numbering. This is 1, this is 2. This is 1, this is 2. So, at carbon number 1, this is methyl and this is going to be ethyl. So, at carbon number 1, it's methyl ethyl. Right? This bis tells you, you have got two same complex substituents. Right? Perfect. At carbon number 1, it's methyl and it's going to be ethyl. In the main chain, there are 9 carbon atoms. So, None everywhere single bond in the main chain, so A. Very simple and basic. Very simple and basic. Imagine, my dear students, imagine there was one more complex substituent attached. The same complex substituent, one more attached. Then, then, then it will be 4, 5, comma something. It's going to be tris. Then it's going to be one methyl ethyl, right? Then it's going to be non A. Perfect. As simple as that. Right? So 4 comma bis and this is going to be the name of the compound. So I hope you can easily solve these sort of basic basic equations from now onwards. These were just the basics. These were just the basic compounds whose name 
I'm sure easily from now onwards you can do. Now guys, try to understand. Let's exactly see how do we name alkenes, right? Slowly, slowly we'll be making the level of the questions complex, right? Let's try to name the alkenes. First of all, two things you have to keep into consideration while naming an alkene. Double bonded carbon should receive the lowest number. Double bonded carbon should receive the lowest number. Maximum multiple bonds to be included in the main chain. Double bonded carbon should receive the minimum number. Right? Maximum multiple bonds to be included in the main chain. Now, look at this particular molecule. Look at this particular compound. Have a look, people. Double bond has to get the minimum number. So start from here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? So in the main chain, what do we have? In the main chain, how many carbon atoms? 7. So it's going to be hept. It's going to be hept. Right? At carbon number 2, there's a double bond. For double bond, what do we use? We use ene. So hept to ene. Simple. Perfect. Now, here you have got how many double bonds? Two double bonds. Maximum multiple bonds to be included in the main chain. Maximum multiple bonds to be included in the main chain, right? So start the numbering from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So at carbon number 3, you have got methyl. So at carbon number 3, you have got methyl. At carbon number 3, you have got methyl. In the main chain, in the main chain, 7 carbon atoms. So you will be using the term hept. You will be using the term hept. Now my dear students, remember. If in the main chain, if in the main chain, there are more than one double bonds if in the main chain there are more than one double bonds or or more than one triple bond in the main chain if there is more than one double bond or more than one triple bond then what do we do i won't be using the term hept here i'll be using the term hepta here hepta if the main chain contains more than one double bond or more than one triple bond after the word root i'll be using the term a so hepta hepta at carbon number 1 and at carbon number 5. At 1 and 5. You have got 2 pi bonds. Right? 2 pi bonds. So it's going to be diene. This is going to be the name of the compound. Clear? Clear people? Look at this particular compound. Maximum, maximum multiple bonds to be included in the main chain. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, 4 and 5. Perfect. Right? So the word root has to be pent. Word root has to be pent. Is it going to be pent or penta? It's going to be penta. Right? At carbon number 1 and 3. 1 comma 3. It's going to be diene. 1, 3, diene. Is every single thing clear till here people? Quickly. Quickly in the chats. Is every single thing clear till here? Quickly let me know in the chats. Okay. Okay, guys. All right. Let's move on to few more. Let's move on to few more. Start the numbering. Keep on writing the names in the chat. Keep on writing the names in the chat. Start from here. This is carbon number one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five, six, and seven. So first of all, it's going to be hept, hept or hepta. It's going to be hepta. At carbon number 1, 3 and 5. So it's going to be 1, 3 and 5. It's going to be triene. It is going to be triene. It is going to be triene. Right? Yes. Look at the next one. Next one. Multiple, maximum multiple bonds to be included in the main chain. So this is going to be my main chain. This is going to be my parent chain over here. Now start the numbering. Start from here. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Or you can start from here as well. It won't make a difference. 1, 2, 3, and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At carbon number 3, you have got a substituent. This is CH2, CH2, CH3. So it's a propyl group basically. So at carbon number 3, you have got a propyl group. At carbon number 3, you have got a propyl group. In the main chain, 5 carbon atoms. Right? So it's going to be pent. Is it going to be pent or penta? It's going to be penta. At carbon number 1 and 4, at carbon number 1 and 4, it's going to be diene. It is going to be diene. So this is going to be the name of the compound. As simple as that. Look at the next one. Next one. Again, I'm telling you. Again, I'm telling you. 
मल्टीपल मल्टीपल पाई बॉन्ड्स टू बी इंक्लूडेड इन द मेन चेन मल्टीपल पाई बॉन्ड्स टू बी इंक्लूड इन द मेन चेन राइट सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी योर मेन चेन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस इज गोइंग टू बी योर मेन चेन देन ओनली मल्टीपल पाई बॉन्ड्स विल बी इंक्लूडेड नाउ विल यू बी स्टार्टिंग द नंबरिंग फ्रॉम टॉप और फ्रॉम बॉटम इफ आई स्टार्ट नंबरिंग फ्रॉम बॉटम दिस इज वन दिस इज टू दिस इज थ्री राइट दिस इज एथ हाइल ग्रुप दिस एथ हाइल ग्रुप हेर योगर मीथ हाइल ग्रुप इफ आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम नंबरिंग फ्रॉम द बॉटम देन एट कार्बन नंबर थ्री यू गॉट एथ हाइल ग्रुप At carbon number four, you have got a methyl group, right? But if you start the numbering from top to bottom, at carbon number three, you have got methyl. At carbon number four, you have got ethyl. Methyl starts with M. Ethyl starts with E. In the alphabetical order, E comes before M. So prioritize E. Prioritize E. So ethyl should get the minimum number. So start from here. One, two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. Right? While writing also, you will prioritize ethyl first. So it is three ethyl. It is three ethyl, three ethyl, comma four methyl, three ethyl, four methyl in the main chain six carbon atoms. So it's hex. Is it going to be hex or hexa? It is going to be hexa because two double bonds in the main chain. Hexa, right? Hexa, and it's going to be one comma five, one comma five, and it's going to be diene. Perfect. As simple as that. I believe it's clear. I believe it's clear. Let me know once the chats are clear. I hope you got to know how do we name exactly the alkenes. I did not mix alkenes, alkynes yet. Just wait for it. Slowly, slowly, things will get complex. Slowly, slowly. Now let's talk about alkynes. Alkynes. So there is a triple bond. There is a triple bond. Perfect. Now my dear students, same rules. Whatever we have discussed till now, we are going to use the same rules. Let's call this carbon number one. This is two. This is three. This is four. So it's going to be but. At carbon number one, it's going to be ion. So but one ion, perfect. Now start the numbering: one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Right? This is going to be the numbering. This is going to be the numbering in the main chain. Seven carbon atoms. So what should I use? I should use hept. Should I use hept or hepta? There are two triple bonds in the main chain, so I should use hepta. Right? I should use hepta. Perfect. Now at carbon number two and carbon number four, two comma four. Two comma four. It's going to be di ion. There are two triple bonds, so di and triple bond means ion. Hepta two four di ion. Right? Look at the next one. Look at the next one. From where you are going to start the numbering? You'll start the numbering. See, maximum multiple bonds to be included in the main chain. So this has to be your main chain. Now whether you are going to start the numbering from here or here. First locant should get the minimum number. Right? Then go for the lowest locant rule. I mean lowest sum rule. So you will find your numbering has to be from this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Is this seven actually? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. So at carbon number three, you have got ethyl. So first you will write three ethyl. First of all, you will write three ethyl. Then it's going to be hept. It's going to be hept. Is it going to be hept or hepta? See, what do we have? We have got two triple bonds. We have got two triple bonds in the parent chain. Is it going to be hept or hepta? Is it going to be hepta? Right now, at carbon number one and carbon number six, at one and six, it's going to be diene. Diene. I believe it's clear to everyone. Right? I believe it's clear to everyone. Perfect, guys. Perfect. Look at this one. Look at this one. I told you in the beginning. First, always you will see the first locant has to get the minimum number. If you are unable to check from that, go to lowest sum rule. If you are unable to check from lowest sum rule, follow the alphabetical order. Correct? Follow the alphabetical order. Now, guys, try to understand what exactly I'm going to say. In the same carbon chain, you have got two types of bonds: triple bond, double bond. Triple bond, double bond. Perfect. Follow the lowest locant rule. Right? First locant should get the minimum number. If I start the numbering from here, one, two, three, four, five. And the first locant is getting number one. If I start the numbering from right to left, then it's going to be one two. The first locant will be getting number two, right? So this is my correct numbering. Perfect. Now, guys, this is ene and this is ine, right? This is ene, this is ine. Now try to understand. In the main chain, there are five carbon atoms, so it's pent. Here you are not going to write penta because one is double, one is triple. One is double, one is triple. Either both should be double or both should be triple. Then only you'll write penta. Here one is double, one is triple. No penta here. No penta here. Right? 
so it's pent. Now, E starts with E, I starts with Y, alphabetically, which one to prioritize? E comes first, E comes first, then comes Y. So I'll prioritize this first, so I'll write pent, one, this is going to be E, and at carbon number three, you have got I, you have got I, but, but, my dear students, after E, after E, a vowel sound is starting. A vowel sound I'm talking about. After E, a vowel sound is starting. Whenever after this E, vowel sound starts, you have to drop this E. You have to drop this E. So what has to be the name? What has to be the name? It is simply going to be pent. One, in, three, I. This is going to be the name of the compound. As simple as that. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. Multiple bonds to be present in the main chain. So this is going to be your main chain. Now from where you are going to start the numbering? Will you start the numbering from here? Or here? Try to understand. Try to understand. From where you are going to start the numbering? Quickly, let me know. Let me know. My dear students, this is E in here. This is I in here. Perfect. E starts with E. See the first locant, you cannot decide on the base of first locant. You cannot decide on the base of lowest sum rule. Now there is alphabetical order left. Now, this is ein, this is in. This starts with Y, this starts with E. So alphabetically E comes first. If E comes first, I'll be prioritizing this E. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Perfect. Now, now, now. Look at this particular example. Add carbon number 3, there's a propyl group. 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry, butyl group. So add carbon number 3, you have got a butyl group. So carbon number 3, you have got butyl group. In the main chain, 5 carbon atoms. So it's going to be pent. It's going to be pent. This is in, this is ein. E comes alphabetically first. So it's going to be 1, in, and 4, ein. But look at this particular scenario again. After E, vowel sound is starting. So drop the C. Simple. Simple, guys. I believe you can solve these sort of questions easily from now on. Perfect. I believe you can solve these sort of questions easily from now on. Okay. What is going to be the name of this one? I think we already did this or not. Are we done with this? No. Okay, look at this particular molecule. What should be its name? First locant has to get the minimum number. This is carbon number one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five, six, seven, eight. So eight carbon atoms in the main chain, right? So I'll be using the term oct. I'll be using the term oct. Should I use octa? I won't be using octa. For octa, there should be either two double bonds or two triple bonds, right? Perfect. It's going to be oct. Now, this is, this is ein, this is ein, right? This starts with E, this starts with Y. So I'll prioritize E, alphabetically it comes first. So it's going to be oct, oct 6 ein, 1 ein, 1 ein. After E, vowel sound is starting, so drop this E, drop this E over here. Now look at this particular case, look at this particular case. I believe, I believe you can easily solve this one. What do you think? What do you think is going to be the name? What do you think is going to be the name? Let's first of all see from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. The first locant is at carbon number 1. Right? Perfect. Second locant is at 3. Third locant is at 6. Right? If I start the numbering opposite direction. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. The first locant is at 1. The second locant is at 4, right? The third locant is at 6. Is that? Is that? 1, 2, 3, 4. Here 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Now first of all, go for the lowest sum rule. This is, see, first locant is same. Then go for the lowest. 6, 3, 9, 1, 10, right? 6, 4, 10, 1, 11, right? So prioritize the numbering from left to right. Prioritize the numbering from left to right. And when you do the numbering from left to right, you can easily name it then. Call this as 1, call this as 2, call this as 3, this is 4, this is 5, this is 6, this is 7. Right? So it's first of all going to be hept. It's first of all going to be hept. Perfect. Now my dear students try to understand. Try to understand. This is in, this is also in, this is i. So which one to prioritize? I'll be prioritizing e first. I'll be prioritizing e first. So it is going to be hept, hept dash, 1, 3, di in, 1, 3. It's going to be di in. 1, 3, diene. And at carbon number 6, you have got ein. So ein. After E, vowel sound is starting. So drop this E over here. Perfect. Simple. I believe you should be able to solve 
these sort of questions. Asha, by the way, I forgot to tell you one thing. Here you have got two double bonds. So should I use should I be using hept or hepta? Right? Two double bonds were there. So it's hepta. Perfect. Now talking about the cyclic compounds. In case of cyclic compounds, my dear students, you have to use the term cyclo first. In case of cyclic compounds, you have to use the term cyclo first. Right? Now see, since it is a close ring, so use the term cyclo. Now how many carbon atoms do you have? Three. So it's going to be cyclo. Propane. Cyclopropane. Everywhere single bond. Cyclopropane. Simple. So it's a closed ring. So it's cyclo. It's cyclo. In the, in the ring there are four carbon atoms. So it's but. Everywhere single bond. So it's cyclobutane. Right. Now start the numbering from here. This is for example one. This is two. Three. Four. Five. It's going to be one comma two dimethyl. One comma two dimethyl. One comma two dimethyl. It's going to be then cyclo. In the main chain, five carbon atoms, so it's going to be pent everywhere, single bond, so it's going to be ane, right? So this is going to be name of the compound. Simple, right? Simple and basic. Simple and basic. Look at this one. Let's call this as carbon number one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. Since it's a closed ring, closed loop, it is cyclo first of all. In the chain, five carbon atoms, so pent, right? At carbon number one, there's a double bond, so it has to be ane. Simple, right? Let's call this as 1, 2, this is 3, 4, 5 and 6. 1 and 2, 2 methyl groups. So 1, 2 dimethyl. 1, 2 dimethyl. Then it's cyclo. It is cyclo. In the main chain, 6 carbon atoms. So hex, hex, 1 double bond. Add carbon number 1. So it's in. Name of the compound. Done and dusted. Right? Done and dusted. Perfect guys. Is it clear till here? Is it clear till here? Quickly. Is it clear till here? What should be the name of this particular compound? Let me know in the chats. What should be the name of the last compound? Let me know in the chats quickly. Let me see if you understood. Be careful. Here you have got. Here you have got ethyl. Here you have got methyl. Right? Quickly guys, quickly, whatever things I've told you till now, use the same. Done? Is it done? This is ethyl, this is methyl. Ethyl starts with E, so prioritize that. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. Right? Right guys? So what is going to be the name? Ethyl starts with E, methyl starts with M. I'll try to write ethyl first. So it's going to be 1 ethyl. It's going to be 1 ethyl. 2 methyl. 2 methyl. Then it's going to be cyclo. It is cyclo. In the main chain there are 4 carbon atoms. So it is basically but everywhere there is a sing everywhere there is a sorry there is a double bond so it's going to be one and it's going to be in perfect this is going to be the name of the compound right right people I believe it's clear I believe it's clear try to name this particular compound in the similar process this is one this is two this is three one comma two dimethyl one comma two dimethyl Right, 1, 2 dimethyl, then it's cyclo. It is cyclo. Main chain contains three carbon atoms, so it's prop. Prop. There is a double bond at carbon number one, so it's in. Done and dusted, right? Done and dusted. Look at this particular one. Start the numbering from wherever you want. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six. So it's first of all cyclo. It is hex. Should I write hex or hexa? Two double bonds. So it's hexa. It is hexa. 1 and 4. It's going to be 1, 4. It's going to be diene. This is going to be the name of the compound. Right? Look at the next one. Okay, what do you think here? Which one should I treat as the main chain? Should I consider this one as the main chain or this one as the main chain? Should the linear one be the main chain or cyclic one be the main chain? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? 
Why do you students count the carbon atoms in this particular one? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. In this one, one, two, three, four. More the carbon atoms, the one you are going to select. Right? So which one you are going to prioritize? The linear chain you are going to prioritize because it contains more carbon atoms. This one contains less carbon atoms. Right? So here, what you can exactly do is, here what you can exactly do is, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five. At carbon number two, it is a cyclobutyl group. At carbon number two, it's going to be cyclobutyl. Cyclobutyl. And then it's going to be in the main chain, five carbon atoms. Then it's going to be pent. Everywhere it's a single bond. It's going to be pent in. Done understood? Yes. Okay, what about this one? Among these two rings, which one to prioritize? Which one to prioritize? That ring which contains more carbon atoms. So this is the ring containing more carbon atoms. This is my parent chain over here. Correct two? This is one. Let's call this as two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. At carbon number one, you've got cyclopropyl. At carbon number one, it is cyclopropyl group. Cyclopropyl group. In the main chain, in the main chain, six carbon atoms. So first of all, main chain is cyclic in shape. So it is cyclo, cyclohex everywhere. There's a single bond. So cyclohexane, right? Yeah, done. Look at this one. Which one to prioritize? This one or this particular one? One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Here you have to prioritize this. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Now guys, try to understand. You have selected your parent chain. Now in this parent chain, should I be calling this a simple substituent or complex substituent? Tell me quickly in the chats. Is this the simple substituent or complex substituent? Quickly. Let me call this as one. Let me call this as two. Right? At carbon number one. At carbon number one. At carbon number one. And after that, I'll write one methyl and it's going to be ethyl. One methyl. One methyl ethyl. One methyl ethyl. Done? Then this ring is cyclic. So it's cyclo. It is cyclo. How many carbon atoms? Four. So it's but. Everywhere, single bond. But in. Done and dusted? Done and dusted, people? I believe these sort of questions you should be able to solve from now onwards. These were your cyclic compounds. Right? See how easily we are doing the things. Slowly, slowly level will increase. Slowly, slowly level will increase. Now we are going to talk about the spiro compounds. Have you heard about spiro ones? Have you ever heard about spiro compounds? Whenever you see this particular compound, right? Two rings, two rings having one carbon atom in common. Two rings having one carbon atom in common. You'll be calling this compound as the spiro compound. This is your spiro compound. This particular carbon over here is something which I call as spiro carbon. This is something which I call as spirocarbon. The way in the cyclic compounds we start with cyclo. Similarly, in case of similarly, in case of spiral compounds, in case of spirocyclic compounds, you start with the term spiro. You start with the term spiro. Let's have a look. How do we name it? See, when two rings are attached at a single carbon atom, right? That's something which you call a spirocarbon. Such compounds are called as spirocyclic compounds. Have a look, people. How do we name it? Have a look. How do we name it? Have a look. What? How do we name it? It's a spiro compound. It's understood. Two rings attached. I mean, two rings which have got one atom in common. Two rings, one atom in common. First thing. First thing. How do we do the numbering in these compounds? How do we do the numbering in these compounds? That's important. Okay. If that is important, try to understand carefully. My dear students, you have got two rings here. This is one ring, this is one ring. Okay. Now, first of all, tell me which one is the smaller sized ring. I would say this is the smaller sized ring. In case of spiro compounds, you will start the numbering always from the, from the smaller sized ring. In the spiro compounds, you will start the numbering always from the smaller sized ring. Smaller sized ring. So I have to start the numbering from the smaller sized ring. But do not start with the spirocarbon. Do not start with the spirocarbon. That carbon which will be adjacent to spirocarbon start from there. So this is one. This is two. This is three, four, five, 
six, seven. Done? Done? Look here. Look here. You have got again two rings. How many carbon atoms in this one? One, two, three. Apart from spirocarbon, three carbon atoms. One, two, three, four. Four carbon atoms. Which one is the smaller size? This one is smaller size. Start the numbering from the smaller size. Not from the spirocarbon, the carbon that's adjacent to that. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Calling this is five, this is six, this is seven, this is eight. Right? Numbering is done. Numbering is done. Now, after the numbering is done, after the numbering is done, after the numbering is done, I'll be starting with pyro. Right? Spiro. Bracket on. Bracket on. In the smaller size ring, except the spirocarbon. How many carbon atoms are there? Two. Two. Comma. In the larger size ring, except the spirocarbon. How many are there? One, two, three, four. So two comma four. Two comma four. Total in the main chain, seven carbon atoms. So it's hept. Everywhere there's a single bond. It's aimed. Dusted. Right? Look at the next one. Look at the next one. First, I'll start with spiro. I'll start with spiro, right? Then bracket on, bracket on. In the smaller size ring, one, two, three. In the larger size ring, one, two, three, four, four carbon atoms. Total how many atoms? Eight. So it's oct everywhere, single bond, octane. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Are you getting this, people? Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one quickly. First of all, there's a spiro carbon. I'll start from that ring, which is smaller in size. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. I'll start from here. Let's call this as one. Calling this two, three, four. This is, for example, five. This is six. This is seven. This is eight. Perfect. I'll be starting with the term spiro. I'll be starting with the term spiro. Now, people, in the smaller size ring, how many atoms? One, two, three. Three carbon atoms, comma. Larger size ring. One, two, three, four. Three, comma, four. Perfect. In the main chain, how many carbon atoms? Eight. So, oct. There is a double bond here. Six. It's in. Right? Right, people? Right? Look at the next one. Start from the smaller size ring. Let's call this as one. This is two. This is three. This is four. Calling this five, six, seven, eight. First of all, it is five, six, diethyl. Right? First of all, it's five, comma, six. Five, comma, six, dimethyl. Sorry. Five, comma, six, dimethyl. Right? Now it's spiral. Now it's spiral. In the smaller size ring, one, two, three. In the larger size ring, one, two, three, four. Three comma four. Three comma four. In the main chain, eight carbon atoms. So oct everywhere is a single bond. So it's in. Done? Done, guys? I believe it's clear. The next one. The next one. See, both the rings are similar in size. Both the rings are similar, similar in size. One is substituted, one is not. Right? One is substituted, one is not. So I'll start with the one which is substituted. Let me call this as carbon number one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is four. Let's call this as five. This is six. This is seven. So it is first of all one comma two dimethyl. One comma two dimethyl. One comma two dimethyl. Then you write spiro. Then you write spiro. Right? Then you write spiro. One, two, three. 3 comma 3, 3 comma 3, 3 comma 3. In the main chain, 7 carbon atoms. So it's, it's hept. Everywhere it's a single bond. So it's aim. Right? Correct, guys? Look at this one. Start the numbering from that ring, which is smaller in size. Which one is smaller in size? Have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This one is smaller in size. Let me start from here. This is carbon number 1. This is 2. This is 3. This is 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Perfect. Now add carbon number 2, you have got a methyl. Add carbon number 2, you have got a methyl group. So 2 methyl. Perfect. Now it's a spiro compound. So write spiro. Right? In the smaller size ring, 1, 2, 3, 4. In the larger size ring, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 carbon atoms. In the main chain, 10 carbon atoms. So it's deck. Everywhere, there is not a single bond. There is a double bond here. Right? So it's deck. So it's deck. Add carbon number 1, it's in. Right? People, can you solve these sort of questions from now on quickly? Yeah? Right, people?
Okay, guys. I mean, are you getting all the things clearly? Are you getting all the things clearly? Look at this one. Start with the smaller size drawing. One, two, three, four. This is five. This is six. This is seven. This is eight. Perfect. So first, you will be starting with the term spiral. Then, in the smaller size ring, one, two, three. So it is three comma. Larger size ring, one, two, three, four. So three comma four. Three comma four. In the main chain, total eight carbon atoms. So it's oct, right? At carbon number six, there is a double bond. So oct six in. Oct six in, right? Oct six in. The next one. The next one. Which one to prioritize? Smaller size ring to prioritize. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Right? Start from here. One, two, three, four, five. Now, is this going to be six or this is going to be six? Since this is substituted, so this is going to be six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's going to be, first of all, have a look. This is ethyl group. This is methyl group. Ethyl starts with E, methyl starts with M. So it's going to be six ethyl. It's going to be six ethyl. 7 methyl, 6 ethyl, 7 methyl. Then it is a spiral compound. So spiral. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 4 carbon atom in the smaller ring. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 carbon atoms in the larger ring. Right? In the main chain, total 10 carbon atoms. So it's DEC. Everywhere is a single bond. So DEC in. Right? Right, people? Right, guys? Buddha Surya. The bicyclo and spiro compounds with functional groups and multiple bonds are out of syllabus. Bro, since you know that your syllabus got reduced, now they got to increase the level of the paper so they can ask anything. Right? They have not mentioned in your syllabus that this is deleted. Perfect. This is normal neat level. It is your now going to be the neat level. Be careful with all this, whatever I am saying. It is now going to be your neat level. Okay? Because the level of the neat paper has to be tough. Right? And this is, this is basic stuff, guys. This is basic. Remember one rule and kill it. That's it. What is there to think? Yeah? Perfect. Okay, let's move ahead. Let's move ahead. Now, spiro is done. Have a look on bicyclo. Have a look on bicyclo. Right? Have a look on bicyclo. And, anyways, if they do not ask question from spiro bicyclo, what is wrong? It's a free class. You're not paid for it, right? Yeah. That was rude, I think. Was that rude from my side? I say it. It's okay. I don't take things seriously. Let's start with GOC first. It's a first lecture, guys. Just wait for it. Slowly, slowly, you'll see the other chapters too. No issues. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now we have got bicyclo compounds. We have got bicyclo compounds. My dear students, there is a special way of naming bicyclo compounds. Now, first of all, what are bicyclo compounds? Let's have a look. This is your bicyclo compound. Look at the definition. Bicyclo compound, it consists of two fused rings. This is one ring. This is one more ring. Both the rings have got two atoms in common. Both the rings have got two atoms in common. Whenever you see such kind of the rings, in which two atoms will be common to two rings, right? Perfect. In which two atoms will be common. The rings will be fused. You'll be calling it as a bicyclo compound. Now, the point is how do we name the bicyclo compound? That's important. Try to understand how do we exactly name the bicyclo compound. See, first of all, how do we do the numbering first of all? How do we do the numbering? My dear students, this carbon and this carbon which is common to both the rings, you call these carbons as the bridged carbons. You call them as the bridged carbons. Okay. Now, first of all, first of all, first of all, from where and how exactly you're going to start the numbering? 
you'll be always starting the numbering from the bridge head carbon from the bridge head carbon either from here or from here so it's carbon number one for example right it's carbon number one now which ring is bigger in size this particular ring is bigger in size that ring which is bigger in size that has to be prioritized so this is two this is three this is four this is five this is six now this is seven this is eight i hope till here it's clear i hope till here it's clear right i hope till here it's clear now i'll be using the term bicycle i'll be using the brackets i'll be using the brackets now if i ask you something like this if i ask you something like this for example in order to move from carbon number one to carbon number six in order to move from this bridgehead carbon till this bridgehead carbon how many paths are available to me i can choose this path to go from one to six to go to go from one bridgehead to another bridgehead i can choose this i can choose this particular path or i'll directly come from one to six so how many paths are there three paths three paths are there right three paths exactly are there one is the longest path one is the longest path one is shorter path and the middle one it is the shortest path right longest shorter shortest now tell me how many carbon atoms do you see in the longest path except the bridgehead carbons one two three four so write four comma shorter path one two right shortest path there is no carbon atom in the middle so four comma two comma zero right total how many carbon atoms eight or everywhere single bond in done and dusted understood for example look at another one look at another one look at another one people look at another one have a look properly this is these two are your bridgehead carbons right these two are your bridgehead carbons now follow the path one path is this one path is this one path is this right now guys over here try to understand one simple thing one simple thing all the rings they have got equal size basically so start from the bridgehead carbon for example from here right this is two this is three this is four this is five this is six now this is seven this is eight okay now you'll be writing first of all bicycle bicycle all the paths are same this is one path this is second path and this is your third path right in all the paths one two one two one two it's going to be two comma two comma two perfect in the chain i mean how many total carbon atoms are there seven so it's going to be hept everywhere it's a single bond so hept in i hope you're understanding all these things okay the next one the next one the next one guys the next one okay this again the bicyclo compound these are your bridgehead carbons these are your bridgehead carbons now which ring you have to choose the larger size ring calling this as carbon number sorry calling this as carbon number 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 this is 6 7 and 8 right so first of all 7 8 2 methyl groups so 7 comma 8 dimethyl 7 comma 8 dimethyl right then you will be using the term bicyclo you'll be using the term bicyclo now from 1 to 6 longest path shorter path shortest path in the longest path how many carbon atoms 1 2 3 4 so far four carbon atoms in the shorter path 1 2 two carbon atoms in the shortest path no carbon atom in the middle so 4 2 0 since there are eight carbon atoms so it's oct everywhere it's a single bond so it's in done understood right done with this done with this done with this okay look at this one i believe you can easily solve them now okay start with the bridgehead so this is one okay longest path two three four five six seven and this is eight this is one more bridgehead right so i'll be using it on bicyclo bicyclo in the longest path one two three three carbon atoms in the shorter path one two two carbon atoms in the shortest path one carbon atom in the middle right how many carbon atoms in total oct eight carbon atoms everywhere single bond so it's in right it's in hello the next one these are your bridgeheads these are your bridgeheads now 
This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. For example. So first of all, you'll write bicyclo. You'll write bicyclo, right? This path and this path, they are same. So it's one comma one comma in the middle. There is no carbon, zero, and it's going to be bicyclo one comma one comma zero. It's going to be but everywhere there is a single bond, so it's ane. Perfect. Now start from the bridge heads. So carbon number one. Let's call this as carbon number one. Now after this, this particular path contains two carbon. This particular path again contains two carbon. Which one to prioritize? This one is substituted two. So calling this two, three, four, five. Six and this is seven, so it's two comma three, it's two comma three dimethyl, two comma three dimethyl. Okay, it's two comma three dimethyl. Then you'll be writing the term bicyclo, bicyclo. This path contains two carbon atoms. This particular path contains two carbon atoms. This particular path contains one carbon atom. So it's two comma two comma one, right? And in the main chain, how many? Seven carbon atoms. So it's hept. Everywhere it's a single bond, so it's heptane. Is are you understanding all these things? Are you able to understand all these things? Clearly, clearly, I mean, clearly. Okay, if everything is clear till here, let's move on to next one. Mo moving on to next one. Again, a bicyclo compound. This is one. I mean, these are the bridge heads. This path contains two. This path contains one, two, two carbon atoms, right? So I'll be prioritizing this one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? So first of all, I'll write bicyclo. It's a bicyclo compound. Perfect. Here, two carbon atoms. Here, two carbon atoms. Here, one carbon atom in the middle. So two comma two comma one. In the main chain, there are seven carbon atoms, so it's hept, right? At carbon number two, there's a double bond, so it's hept to ene. Done and dusted, right? So look at your bridge heads. These are your bridge heads. Perfect. Start, for example, from here. Now, this path contains one, two carbon atoms. This path contains two carbon atoms. Which one to prioritize? The one which substituted. So two, this is three, four, five, six. So it's going to be two comma three, two comma three dimethyl, two comma three dimethyl. Then you'll write the term bicyclo, bicyclo. So two, two, zero, right? Two, two, zero. And it's going to be six carbon atoms in total, right? So it's going to be hex. Everywhere is a single bond, so hex in. Perfect, guys. Okay, the next one. The next one. Both the rings are equal in size. Both the rings are equal in size. Let me start from here. One. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. So three comma four dimethyl. 3 comma 4 dimethyl number 1 okay after that bicyclo after that bicyclo this path this path equal in size right okay 1 2 3 4 even 1 2 3 4 in the middle there is no carbon atom so 4 comma 4 comma 0 4 4 0 in the main chain 10 carbon atoms so deck at carbon number 3 there is a double bond so deck 3 in deck 3 in Perfect. Right, guys? So I believe these sort of questions can be easily solved from now on. Okay, look at this one. Look at this particular one. Look at this particular one. All right, guys. So this is your bridgehead carbon. This is your bridgehead carbon. Perfect. This path contains two carbons. This path also contains two carbons. One, two. But this one is substituted. Right? So let's call this as one. This is two. This is three. This is four. 5, 6, and in the middle it's 7, right? So 2 comma 3 diethyl. 2 comma 3 is going to be diethyl. Sorry, dimethyl. 2 comma 3 dimethyl, right? Now I'll be using the term bicyclo. Bicyclo, right? Now, here two carbon atoms, here two carbon atoms, in the middle one carbon atom. So 2 comma 2 comma 1. 2 comma 2 comma 1. In the main chain, how many carbon atoms? 7 carbon atoms. So hept. It is hept. Now, in the main chain, there are two double bonds. So it has to be hepta. It has to be hepta. 2, comma 5. Hepta. 2, comma 5. It's going to be diene. It's going to be diene. I believe this is also clear to everyone. Okay? So with this, with this people, we are done with 
एल्केन्स एल्केन्स एल्काइंस साइक्लिक स्पाइरो एंड बाइसाइक्लो राइट लेट्स टेक अ ब्रेक फॉर 15 मिनट्स गेट बैक एंड वी विल सी द कंपाउंड्स कंटेनिंग फंक्शनल ग्रुप्स राइट सो द टाइम राइट नाउ इज 2021 राइट 2021 आई विल हैव ए बेसिकली सो बिकॉज़ this throat is throat starts aching okay so what time you'll get back but i would want every one of you to be back guys i would want everyone every single one of you to be back what time i'll see you at 8:45 okay session session resumes at 8:45 8:45 pm okay i would want every one of you to be back every one of you to be back because we have to complete this guys we have to complete this otherwise it's not going to be fun and if you won't be back then your organic chemistry will be stopped here only right this is tumki from my side see you in a while okay see you in a while
What's up, people? Can you all hear me? Am I audible, visible, audible, visible to everyone? Quickly, let me know in the chats if all of you can again hear me, if I'm perfectly audible, visible to every one of you. <clears throat> yes, can you all hear me? <coughs> <coughs> just a second guys just a second. just a second okay all right so already again i think everyone got back uh, like I was saying your chats, people were asking about the Avenger 3.0 batch. It's not at 8,500. It's only at 3999, right? 3999 only is the cost of it. Link is there in the description box. You just have to use the code WASSIM10. You'll get the lot of discount and you'll be getting the batch exactly for 3999. Okay? And it started yesterday only. Okay, so should we start people? Are you all ready now? Are you all ready now? Are you all ready now? Say yes or no in the chats. We are just going to take almost like one hour more. Yeah. And we are done. Yes, I'll be teaching isomerism also. Yes, yes, I'll be doing that. I'll be teaching isomerism also. Perfect guys. So let's get to know. Like, how do we name those compounds which contain functional groups, right? The first functional group which we are going to discuss right now, that is going to be your carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid, COOH group. This group is what you call as carboxylic acid, right? C, double bond O, OH. I hope this is something which you already know. This is how, this is your basically what? This is your carboxylic group. My dear students, I would want you to remember only two to three things over here. I would want you guys to remember just two to three things over here. And what are those two to three things exactly? Have a look. I am going to talk about, I'm going to compound, I'm going to talk about those compounds which contains the functional group carboxylic acid. Now three things you have to remember over here. My dear students, as a suffix basically, as a suffix, as a suffix, when we have to use carboxylic acid as a suffix, either you'll be using the term oic acid, either you'll be using the term oic acid, or you'll be using the term carboxylic acid. When you treat carboxylic acid as suffix, basically, when you have to write it as suffix, either you'll be write, writing oic acid at the end, or you'll be writing carboxylic acid at the end. Now, when to write oic acid, when to write, write carboxylic acid. Do remember, when the carbon of the carboxylic acid, when the carbon of the carboxylic acid is the part of the main chain, is the part of the parent chain, is the part of the parent chain. At that point, at that point of time, the suffix used for carboxylic acid is oic acid. Okay? And if the carbon of the carboxylic acid is not the part of the main chain, the suffix which we need to use, that is directly going to be carboxylic acid at the end. You'll get to know in some time what that means. And similarly, as a prefix, we use the term carboxy or carboxylic acid. We use the term carboxy for the carboxylic acids. Let's have a look exactly what it means. By the way, on this channel, we never used to have the spammers. Who is this Murti? PW, PW, PW. What do I have to do with PW, guys? Huh? Why are you writing the name PW here in the chats? Are you out, out, out of your sense? Why are you writing it here? Let people study, right? Let people get benefited from everywhere. Whatsoever platform it is. Anyways, everyone is 
taking the free sessions only. Be it this platform, some other platform. Yeah? Or you are the paid user or something. Okay. Perfect. Guys. Try to understand. So two things I told you. Carboxylic acid as a suffix. You'll be either using oic acid or you'll be using carboxylic acid. Right? As a prefix, you'll be using carboxy. Now try to understand. Look at this particular compound over here. If you look at this particular compound properly, this is your COOH group. This is C double bond OH. This is the carboxylic group here. Perfect. Now, my dear students, just start the numbering. Start the numbering. Call this carbon number one. This is two. This is three. This is four. So the word root has to be but. Everywhere it's a single bond. So it is butane. Butane. Right? The carbon of the carboxylic acid is the part of the main chain. It is the part of the main chain. Right? It is a part of the main chain. It is the part of the main chain. Correct? It is the part of the main chain. Perfect. So what should I use? Butane, it's one oic acid. It is one oic acid. Now tell me one thing. After this E, after this E, a vowel sound is starting. Drop this E. Drop this E over here. Perfect. It's just give me a second. Just a second, people. Just a second, just a second. Just a second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Guys, just a second, okay? Just give me a second. Just a second. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Just a second. Let me import the file. It will take a minute. It will take a minute. It will take a minute. Just a minute, guys, just a minute. Wait, I'll have to reload the slides again. I had by mistakenly used the previous slide. You got what I'm talking about, right? Mistakenly, I have used the previous slide. Just a second. I know you won't have any problem, but I'll have problem, right? I'll have problem. Just, just wait. Just wait for a minute. <clears throat> And please don't write it in the comment section, okay? I'll be killed. <clears throat> wow, 
स्केच ऑफ मैटर This looks better now. This looks better. Okay, let's move on, guys. Let's move on. Let's move on now. All right. So first of all, I told you for the carboxylic acids, you have to remember three things. As a suffix, you'll be either using oic acid or you'll be using carboxylic acid. If the carbon of the carboxylic acid is the part of main chain, the suffix used is oic acid. If the carbon of the carboxylic acid is not the part of main chain, the suffix used is carboxylic acid. And if we have to take carboxylic acid as a prefix, then we'll be using the term carboxy. Carboxy. Try to understand. Try, try to understand that. Have a look. Let me start the numbering over here. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So in the main chain, there are four carbon atoms. So word root has to be but. Everywhere it's a single bond. So it's aim. At carbon number one, you will be writing. Since there is a carboxylic acid over here. So you will be writing oic acid. Why oic acid people? Why oic acid? Because carbon of the carboxylic acid is the part of main chain. Now after this E, vowel sound is starting. So drop the C. Right? This is going to be the name of the compound. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. Calling this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So at carbon number two, you have got two methyl groups. So it is two comma two dimethyl. Two comma two dimethyl. Two comma two dimethyl. Now, in the main chain, four carbon atoms. So but everywhere it's a single bond. But aim. And over here, as you can see, it is carboxylic acid. The carbon of the carboxylic acid is the part of the main chain. So it's going to be one suffix used is oic acid. Right? Suffix used is oic acid. After E, vowel sound is starting. So drop this E over here. Okay? Now, one, two, three, and four. Perfect. So first of all, the word root is going to be but. Everywhere is a single bond. So it's but in. Right? One and four. One and four. One and four. 1 and 4. There are two carboxylic acids. COH. This is COOH. Right? Two carboxylic acid groups. Perfect. So I'll be using the term di. I'll be using the term di. Now tell me one thing. Tell me one thing. Whether the carbon of these carboxylic acids is the part of main chain. Yes, they are the part of main chain. So it's dioic acid. It is dioic acid. I believe you can do these sort of questions easily from now onwards. Moving ahead. Moving ahead, look at this particular thing. This particular one is important, guys. This particular compound is important. See, this is your carbon, carbon, carbon. This is your C double bond OOH. This is your C double bond OOH. This is your C double bond OOH. So three carboxylic acid groups are attached. Three carboxylic groups are attached, right? Do remember one simple rule, my dear students. Whenever you have got Whenever you have got more than, more than two, more than two, more than two, same groups, same functional groups, starting with carbon, starting with carbon and directly attached and directly attached to the chain and directly attached to the chain. And directly attached to the chain. And directly attached to the chain. None of these carbons of the carboxylic acids is to be included in the main chain. None of the carboxylic acids is to be included in the main. None of the carbon of the carboxylic acids is to be included in the main chain. So what I'm trying to say, do not do the numbering here as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do not do that. Because there are three carboxylic acids. There are three functional groups which are starting with carbon and all those carbons of carboxylic acids are directly attached to the chain, are directly attached to the chain. 
none of the carbon of the carboxylic acid is to be is to be is to be considered in the parent chain so let me call this as one let me call this as two let me call this as three right so once it's done once it's done now what you'll be writing you'll be writing propane because single bond everywhere propane it is going to be one two and three propane one comma two comma three none of the carbon of the carboxylic acid is the part of the main chain it's going to be tricarboxylic acid <clears throat> tricarboxylic acid tricarboxylic acid look at the next one look at the next one people <clears throat> have a look <clears throat> this is carbon number one two three four five six again three carboxylic acids directly attached with the parent chain none of the carbon of the carboxylic acid is to be is to be none of the carbon of the carboxylic acid is to be considered in the parent chain perfect now it is cyclohexane basically this is cyclohexane this is cyclohexane at one two and four at one two and four what you'll be writing since none of the carbon of the carboxylic acid is the part of the main chain so it's going to be one two four and it's going to be tricarboxylic acid tricarboxylic acid perfect tricarboxylic acid look at the next one look at the next one it is a bicyclo compound it is a bicyclo compound so you start the numbering from the bridgehead carbon perfect from the bridgehead carbon now what do we have to do should we should we prioritize the bigger ring or smaller sized ring i'll be prioritize the bigger sized ring first in the bicyclo compounds if you remember let's call this as carbon number 1 this will be 2 this will be 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 perfect so it is a bicyclo compound. I'll use the term bicyclo first. Right? Now, this is the bigger size ring containing 1, 2, 3, and 4 carbons. So 4, comma. Smaller size ring, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Anyways, they are of equal size. So 4, comma, 4, comma. Right? In between, in between the shortest part, there is no carbon. So 4, comma, 4, comma, 0. So bicyclo 4, 4, 0. Now, how many carbon atoms in the main chain? 10. So, it's going to be DEC. Everywhere, it's a single bond. DEC in at 3 and 4. At 3, 4. There are two carboxylic acids. None of the carbon of the carboxylic acid is the part of main chain. So, it's going to be 3, 4. Dicarboxylic acid. Dicarboxylic acid. I hope this is clear to everyone. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. Let me call this as carbon number 1. This is 2. This is 3. This is 4. This is 5. This is 6. Right now, my dear students, if you understand, if you look at this particular compound carefully, at carbon number two, it's a complex substituent. It's a complex substituent, right? It's a complex substituent. So first of all, you will say at carbon number two, at carbon number two, this is one here. You will start the numbering here also. This is one. This is one. Now this COH, it will be taken as a prefix, and when COOH taken as a prefix, it's carboxy. So it is written as it is written as one carboxy methyl. One carboxy methyl. Perfect. Then it is going to be a cyclohexane. 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 At one and two, these two are the carboxylic acids, and none of their carbons is the part of the main chain. So cyclohexane. This is going to be one comma four. It's going to be dicarboxylic acid. Dicarboxylic acid. Right? Look at the next one. The next one is spiro compound. The next one is spiro compound. Right? In the spiro compounds, which ring do we need to prioritize first? The one which is smaller size ring. The one with smaller size ring. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. This is the smaller size ring. So call this as one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. This is seven. This is eight. Now, I'll be first of all writing spiro. I'll be writing spiro. In the smaller size ring, one, two, three. Three carbon atoms. In the larger size ring, one, two, three, four. Four carbon atoms. So three comma four. In the chain, there are eight carbon atoms. So it's oct. Everywhere it's a single bond. So it's octane. At carbon number six, there's a carboxylic acid. Carbon of the carboxylic acid is not the part of main chain. So it is six carboxylic acid. Six carboxylic acid. I believe this is clear. I believe this is clear. I believe this is clear. Right? 
Moving ahead. Let's talk about those compounds which have got the cyanide functional group, CN. This is the functional group now, C triple bonded. C triple bonded. This is the cyanide functional group. Here again, you have to remember three things. As a suffix, you'll be using either nitrile or you'll be using carbonitrile. Depending on whether the carbon of cyanide group is the part of main chain or not. If the carbon of the cyanide group is the part of main chain, then the suffix uses nitrile. If the carbon of the cyanide group is not the part of the main chain, then the suffix uses carbonitrile. Carbonitrile. And if CN has to be used as a prefix, then we'll be using the term cyano. We'll be using the term cyano. Let's do certain examples. Nitrile, carbonitrile, cyano. Nitrile, carbonitrile, cyano. Try to understand. First of all, this is your carbon number one. This is two. This is three. Perfect. So now, what is going to be the name? The name is simply going to be 2-methyl. At carbon number 2, you have got a methyl group. So it is 2-methyl, right? In the main chain, 3 carbon atoms, 2-methyl prop, everywhere single bond. So it's in and, and this is CN group. This is CN. Now carbon of cyanide is the part of main chain. The fix used has to be nitrile. So 1-nitrile, 1-nitrile, right? 1-nitrile. Yes. Look at this one. Look at this one. Start the numbering from here. 1, 2. This is 3. This is 4. So it's going to be 3, 3 dimethyl. It is 3, 3 dimethyl. It is 3, 3 dimethyl. In the main chain, 4 carbon atoms. So it is but Everywhere there is a single bond. So it's in. Now, this is a functional group. And the carbon of this cyanide is the part of main chain. So the suffix used is, suffix used is nitrile. Butane 1 nitrile. Butane 1 nitrile. Right? Look at the next one. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it is going to be cyclohexane. It is going to be cyclohexane. The carbon of cyanide is not the part of the main chain. Is not the part of the main chain. The suffix used has to be carbonitrile. So cyclohexane 1 carbonitrile. 1 carbonitrile. I hope this is also done and dusted. I hope this is also done and dusted. Right? Look at the other examples. Let's call this as 1, this is 2, this is 3, 4, 5 and 6. Right? So first of all, it is cyclohexane. It is cyclohexane. At carbon number 1 and carbon number 2, there are functional groups. Cyanide. None of the carbon of cyanide is the part of the, is the, part of the main chain. Right? So it's going to be cyclohexane 1, 2. I'll write di. I'll write di. Should I use nitrile or carbonitrile? I'll be using the term carbonitrile because none of the carbon of cyanide is the part of the main chain. Perfect. Look at the next one. Bicyclo compound. Same size rings. Same size rings. But this, what, this ring is substituted. Right? It contains the functional group. So prioritize this one. Calling this as carbon number one. This is two. This is three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? So I'll be using the term bicyclo. It is the bicyclo compound. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. In the middle, 0. So 4, 4, 4, 0. 4, 4, 0. 10 carbon atoms in total. So it is deck. Everywhere is a single bond. So it's an A. At 3 and 4, 2 functional groups. None of the carbon of the functional group is the part of the main chain. The fix used has to be carbonitrile. But it is going to be 3, 4, 3, 4 dicarbonitrile. 3, 4 dicarbonitrile. Look at this particular compound. It's a spiro compound. It's a spiro compound. In the spiro compound, we start with the lesser membered ring. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? So start the numbering. Not from the spiro carbon. The carbon edges into that. Calling this as 1. This is 2. This is 3. This is 4. Right? Now it's simple. 5. 6, 7, 8. So, write the term spiro first. Write the term spiro. In the smaller size ring, 1, 2, 3, 3 carbon atoms. In the larger size ring, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 carbon atoms. Right? In the main chain, 8 carbon atoms. So, it's oct everywhere. It's single bond. Octane. At carbon number 6 and 7, 2 functional groups. So, 6, 7. It's going to be di. It's going to be di. None of the carbon of the functional group is the part of the main chain. So, it's going to be carbonitrile. 
it is going to be carbonitrile. I believe it's clear. I believe it's clear. I believe it's clear. Right? I believe it's clear. Few more. Few more. Few more. Calling this as one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six. Now, guys, here you have got a complex substituent. In the complex substituent, you'll again start the numbering. Let's call this as one. Calling this as one. Right? So I'll be using this one as the prefix. Right? Now, first of all, add carbon number two. Add carbon number two. There's a complex substituent. Right? This cyanide, I'll be using prefix for it. Prefix for it is cyano. So it is cyanomethyl. It is, it is one cyanomethyl, one cyanomethyl, then it is a cyclohexane, then it is a cyclohexane, it is a cyclohexane. At carbon number one and three, at carbon number one and three, there are two functional groups. None of the carbon of these functional groups is the part of main chain. So I'll be using, I'll be using di. I'll be using di carbonitrile. Di carbonitrile. Did you get this one? Did you get this one? Now, look at this particular one. It's a bicyclo. It's a bicyclo. Start the numbering from the bridged carbon. So let's start from here. Let's start from here. Perfect. Starting from here. Now, guys, try to understand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Both are equal sized rings. Both are equal sized rings. But this one is substituted as well as contains double bond. So prioritize it. So this is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Right? So I'll be first of all using bicyclo. It's a bicyclo compound. Bicyclo. Now tell me. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In the middle, no carbon atom. So four comma four comma zero. In the main chain, 10 carbon atoms, so it's deck. At carbon number 3, there is a double bond, so deck in, deck in, perfect, deck in. At 3 and 4, at 3 and 4, at 3 and 4, there are two functional groups. At 3 and 4, there are two functional groups, perfect. Which one? Cyanide. None of the carbon is the part of the main chain, so I'll be using 3, 4, it is dicarbonitrite. Dicarbonitrile. Is this clear? Is this clear? Is this clear, people? I hope this is clear to everyone. Now, talking about those compounds which contains the functional group CHO, aldehyde. Aldehyde. First, we discussed carboxylic. Second, second was your cyanides. Third is your aldehydes. Right? Third is your aldehydes. Now, in case of aldehydes, CHO. This is your CHO. This is your aldehyde group. Now, this is going to be attached to a, to a chain, basically. This is going to be attached to a chain. Now, guys, try to understand. Three things again you have to remember. Three things again you have to remember. As a suffix, either you'll be using AL, AL, or you'll be using carbaldehyde. As a suffix, either you'll be using AL, or you'll be using carbaldehyde. When you'll be using L? When the carbon of the when the carbon of the aldehyde is the part of main chain. When the <coughs> when the carbon of the carbaldehyde when the carbon of the aldehyde is the part of main chain, you'll be using the term L. When the carbon of the aldehyde is not the part of the main chain, you'll be using the term carbaldehyde. Carbaldehyde. As a prefix, you'll be using the term formyl. As a prefix, you'll be using the term formyl. Now, let's try to use these things in the equations so that you will remember it directly from now onwards. Have a look. Look at this particular one. This is CHO, so aldehyde group. CHO, aldehyde, CHO, aldehyde, right? Now, guys, calling this as one, calling this two, three, and four. So, four carbon atoms, so but everywhere, single bond, in. Carbon of the aldehyde is the part of main chain. So it is 1 and I'll be using the suffix al. Now after E, vowel sound started. So drop the C. Done. Drop the C. Look at the next one. This is carbon number 1. This is 2. This is 3. This is 4. So it is 2, 2 dimethyl. 2, 2. It is dimethyl. 
टू कॉमा टू डायमी कार्बन आइटम इन द मेन चेन फोर सो इट बी ब्यूट इज गिन बी ब्यूट एवरीवेर इज अगल बॉन्ड सो इट गिन बी एन नाउ द कार्बन ऑफ द एल डी हाइट इज द पार्ट ऑफ द मेन चेन सो फिक्स यूज इज ए एल एल सो ड्रॉप दिस लुक एट द नेक्स्ट वन वन टू एंड थ्री सो इट इज सिंपली गोइंग टू बी प्रो Everywhere it's a single bond, so in right at one and three functional groups, one comma three, one comma three. Now both the carbons are the part of the main chain, right? Both the carbons of the aldehydes are the part of main chain, so it's going to be di, and the suffix used is al, right? Perfect, perfect people, perfect. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it is first of all going to be cyclohexane. It's first of all going to be cyclohexane, right? Now at one and two there are two functional groups. None of the carbon of the functional group is the part of the main chain. So the suffix used is going to be carbaldehyde, right? So it's one comma two dicarbaldehyde. Dicarbaldehyde. Look at this one. Bicyclo compound. Same size rings. both are same size rings but this particular ring it contains a functional group so start from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 of so course while i'll be writing the term bicyclo it is bicyclo now now 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 in the middle no carbon atom so 4 comma 4 comma 0 4 comma 4 comma 0 now tell me how many total carbon atoms 10 so it's dec everywhere is a single bond dec in dec in now At carbon number two, there is a functional group, right? Which functional group? Aldehyde. The carbon of aldehyde is not the part of the main chain. So at carbon number two, you'll be writing carbaldehyde. Carbaldehyde because its carbon is not the part of the main chain. The next one, it's a good one, it's a very good one. This is a very good one. Okay, it is a spiro compound first of all, right? In the spiro ones, we start with that ring, which is Which contains less members, which contains less atoms, right? One, two, three. One, two, three, four. I'll start from here. One, two, three, four. Right? This is five. This is six. This is seven. This is eight. Numbering is done. Now here you are going to complex substituent. In the complex substituent, again you have to do the numbering. This is carbon number one. So at seven, first of all, at seven you are going to complex substituent. It is going to be what? This one will be used as a prefix now, so it is formyl methyl, formyl methyl. So it will be written like this. At seven, there is a complex substituent. Then at one, it is going to be formyl. It is going to be formyl methyl, formyl methyl. Complex substituent over. Now it is a spiro compound basically. So write the term spiro. Write the term spiro. Now use the brackets. Smaller size ring one two three. Larger size ring one two three four so it is three comma four it is three comma four now there are in total eight carbon atoms so it's off everywhere it's a single bond so it's in now at carbon number six it is aldehyde and carbon of aldehyde is not the part of main chain so you'll write six carbaldehyde got it got it guys is this one clear? Can you let me know? Is this particular one clear? It has to be clear. Okay, one simpler one. <clears throat> one simpler one. Over here, this is C double bond O O H. This is carboxylic. This is C H O. This is aldehyde. Which one to prioritize? At the end of the session, I'll give you the priority priority list, my dear students. At the end of the session, I'll give you the priority list. But right now, you can remember it like this. Carboxylic acid is given more priority than that of aldehyde. Carboxylic acid is given more priority than that of aldehyde. So start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is to be given priority. So this will be used as suffix. This will be used as prefix. Right. So what should I write? What should I write? At three, it's going to be formyl because I have to use prefix for it. So at three, it's going to be formyl. Three formyl. Then It's going to be cyclohexane, three formyl, cyclohexane, three formyl, cyclohexane. At one, there is a carboxylic acid. 
the carbon of the carboxylic acid is not the part of the main chain. So it is one carboxylic acid. Got it? Perfect. Perfect, guys. Now, there is one more functional group that is amide. The double bond O, NH2. This is your amide functional group. This functional group can be also attached to a carbon chain. Now, when this is attached to the carbon chain, what all things we have to remember? Again, my dear students, only three things I'm giving you. Everywhere, three things you have to remember. As a suffix, either you will use amide or you will use carbamide. As a suffix, either amide or carbamide. When do we use amide? When the carbon of when the carbon of amide, when the carbon of the amide is the part of main chain, suffix uses amide. When the carbon of the amide is not the part of the main chain, suffix uses carbamide. And as a prefix, you will be using carbamoyl. Carbamoyl. So three things. Three things here. It's an amide basically. It's an amide. C double bond O NH2. Right? As a suffix, either amide or carbamide. Amide or carbamide. Now tell me one thing. If the carbon of amide is, if the carbon of amide is the part of the parent chain, is the part of the main chain, then amide. If the carbon of amide is not the part of the main chain, then carbamide. As a suffix, when we use it, we use the name carbamoyl. Carbamoyl. Now try to understand. Try to understand. Few examples. Look at this one. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So first of all, it is but. Everywhere, single bond. So it's ane. Right? This is C double bond O NH2. So the carbon of the amide group is the part of the main chain. So I'll be using the prefix as one amide. Now after E, vowel started, vowel sound, drop the C. Perfect. So it is butane one amide. Yes. Look at the next one. This is one, this is two, this is three. Perfect. So this is prop. This is prop. Everywhere is a single bond. So it's ane. Now at one and two, one and three. At one and three, there are two amide groups. So it's di. So it's di. It's di. Now, the carbon of amides are the part of main chain. So it is simply diamide. It is simply diamide. It is simply diamide. I believe it's clear. Look at the next one. Calling this one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's cyclohexane. It is cyclohexane, my dear students. Right? At carbon number one, there's a functional group. Which one? It's amide. Now the carbon of amide is not the part of main chain. So I'll be using carbamide. <coughs> I'll be using carbamide. Right? I'll be using carbamide. Look at this one. Calling this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So first of all it's cyclohexane. It is cyclohexane. At 1 and 3. At 1 and 3. There are two functional groups. So di. So di. None of the carbon of amide is the part of the main chain. So it is di-carbamide. Carbamide. Because carbon of the carbamide, I mean carbon of the amide is not the part of the main chain. Di-carbamide. Next one. Bicyclo. Bicyclo. Both the rings are equal in size. But one ring carries the functional group. So start from here. 1, 2, this is 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 7, 8, 9 and 10. So first of all, you'll be using the term bicyclo. Bicyclo. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 0 in between. So 4, 4, 0. 4, 4, 0. How many carbon atoms in total? 10. So it is deck. Everywhere single bond. In. At carbon number 2. At carbon number 2, there's a functional group. The carbon of the functional group is not the part of the main chain. So I'll be using carbamide. Carbamide. I believe it's clear. I believe it's clear. Right? I believe it's clear. Look at these two. Look at these two. You should be able to solve them. You should be able to solve them. You should be able to solve them quickly. What do you think? What do you think about this one? Quickly guys, what should be the name of it? You should be able to solve this now. 
is a spiro one right can be done start with the lower size so one two one two three four one two three calling this one this is two this is three this is four five six seven eight use the term spiro first use the term spiro then the lower size ring contains three atoms this is four so three comma four three comma four now eight carbon atoms so it's oct everywhere it's a single bond so ain octane at carbon number six there's a functional group and the carbon of the functional group is not the part of main chain so at six it is going to be carbamide it is going to be carbamide right it's going to be carbamide look at this particular one again simple one two this is three this is four this is five this is six if you remember whenever you see such kind of the scenario in which more than two same functional groups starting with carbon are directly attached with the chain none of the carbon of those functional groups is to be included in the main chain that's why this has to be the numbering already discussed already discussed my dear students now try to understand it is first of all cyclo cyclo what cyclohexane it is first of all cyclohexane now at one two three three functional groups so it is one two three right it is tri it is tri none of the carbon of the amide is to be is included in the main chain right so i'll write tricarbamide tricarbamide right tricarbamide uh sorry this is not one two three this one two four right this is one two and four correct not one two three sorry about that Guys, I might do some mistakes because I'm I'm writing everything first. So if you think somewhere instead of two, I wrote three, instead of a and I wrote in or something, do keep on letting me know in the chats, right? Because I'm writing everything first, so it is understood. Okay. Do keep on telling me that. All right. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. Gopika, I have started from zero only. Watch the session from the beginning. You'll get it. Look at this one. This is your carboxylic acid. This is your amide. Which one to be prioritized? Carboxylic acid. So it has to be taken as suffix. This has to be taken as prefix. Right? So what is the prefix used for amide? It is carbamoyl. So first start the numbering. One, two, three, four, five, six. So at four. You have got carbamoyl. At four, you have got carbamoyl. Then you have got cyclohexane. Then you have got cyclohexane. And at one, there is carboxylic acid. And the carbon of the carboxylic acid is not the part of main chain. So it is one carboxylic acid. One carboxylic acid, right? It is not oic acid, guys. It's not oic acid because the carbon of carboxylic acid is not included in the main chain, right? It's not included. Be careful with this. Be careful with this, right? Be careful with this. Now we have got acid halides. One more functional group, acid halide. Acid halide. Again, few things you have to remember. My dear students, acid halide is something like this. C double bond O. This is OX, where X is your halogens. If it is acid chloride, then X is Cl. Acid bromide, then X is Br. Right? Perfect. Okay. If it is acid chloride, then this X has to be Cl. Then this X has to be Cl. Or normally, right now I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about acid chlorides only. Okay. I'm going to talk about acid chlorides only. C double bond O, this is OCl. Right? This is OCl. Perfect. This is your acid chloride. Now, my dear students, in acid chlorides, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? As a suffix, two things you have to remember. As a suffix, two things you have to remember. Either you'll be using oil chloride as a suffix, or you'll be using carbonyl chloride. Oil chloride as a suffix when the carbon of the when the carbon of the acid chloride is the part of main chain. And when the carbon of the when the carbon of the acid chloride is not the part of the main chain, at that time, the suffix uses carbonyl chloride. 
ऑयल क्लोराइड कार्बन ऑयल क्लोराइड वेन कार्बन ऑफ द फंक्शनल ग्रुप इज इंक्लूडेड वेन कार्बन ऑफ द फंक्शनल ग्रुप इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड एंड वेन वी यूज इट एज अ प्रोफिक्स देर यू विल बी यूजिंग एलोफॉर्माइल 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 ओके एलोफॉर्माइल अब लुक फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स दिस इज सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ सी एल राइट Guys, just a second. I did a mistake. I think this is not OCl. Sorry, this is C double bond OCl. This is C double bond OCl. Okay, mistake on my part. This is not OCl. Sorry, 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 sorry. This is C double bond O. This is Cl, right? Okay. Okay. Look at this one. This is C double bond OCl. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. Perfect. Now, first of all, the word root has to be but. Everywhere is a single bond, so it's but in, right? the carbon of the functional group is the part of the parent chain right so i'll be using oil chloride so this is one and this is oil chloride here oil chloride right after after a vowel sound is starting so drop the c drop the c yeah now guys have a look this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five perfect right so five carbon atoms now try to understand try to understand see so it's pent first of all everywhere it's single bond so pent in now at 1 and 5 at 1 and 5 it's going to be di carbon of both the functional groups are the part of main chain so di oil chloride di oil chloride right di oil chloride perfect i believe this is again clear di oil chloride now few more few more few more look at this one start from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 so what is it going to be it's first of all going to be cyclohexane it's first of all going to be cyclohexane at 1 and 3 functional groups acid chlorides none of the carbon of the acid chlorides is a part of main chain so i'll write 1 comma 3 it's going to be di di carbonyl chloride di carbonyl chloride right perfect the next one bicyclo right both are equal sized rings both are equal sized rings okay but this one is substituted so one sorry let me call this as one this as two this is three this is four five six seven eight nine and 10 now 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 guys so first of all you will be writing bicyclo because it's a bicyclo compound perfect then 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 in the middle no carbon atom so 4 4 0 Four four zero, right? At then in the main chain there are ten carbon atoms, so it's dec. Everywhere is a single bond, so it's in perfect. At two and four, at two and four, there are two acid chlorides, and none of the carbon of the acid chloride is the is included in the main chain, so it's going to be di. It's going to be di carbonyl chloride. Di carbonyl chloride, perfect. Di carbonyl chloride. Moving ahead. Look at this one. Look at this one. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, in case of spiro compounds, you have to start from that from that ring, which is lesser in size. So, calling this one. This is two. This is three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, first of all, I'll be writing spiro. I'll be writing spiro in the lower member ring. One, two, three. In the higher member ring. One, two, three, four, five. 3.5 3.5 in the main chain nine carbon atoms so none everywhere it's a single bond so in at carbon number 1 there is acid chloride right but the carbon of the acid chloride is not included in the main chain so it has to be carbonyl chloride carbonyl chloride perfect carbonyl chloride look at the next one here you have a double bond perfect So start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So it is cyclo hex. At three, it is in. It is in. At one, there is a functional group. Which one? It is acid chloride. But carbon of acid chloride is not included in the main chain. So it's going to be directly carbonyl chloride. It is going to be directly carbonyl chloride. Okay. Directly carbonyl chloride. Perfect. Okay, look at these two. Look at these two. You should be able to solve these two as well. 
It's simple, guys. Calling this one, this is two, this is three, four, five, and six. So first of all, it's cyclohexane. Everywhere it's a single bond, right? Cyclohexane. Now at one and three, it is di. None of the carbon. Oh sorry. Oh sorry. Oh sorry. Oh sorry. Look at this one. This is C double bond OH. This is carboxylic acid. This is acid chloride. Among carboxylic acid and acid chloride, which one is prioritized? Carboxylic acid will be prioritized, right? Carboxylic acid will be prioritized. So you'll be using it as the suffix, and this has to be used as a prefix. As a prefix, right? Now start the numbering. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Perfect. Now, as a prefix, as a prefix, what do we use? Haloformyl. So three haloformyl. Three haloformyl, right? Then it's going to be cyclohexane. Then it's going to be cyclohexane. Cyclohexane. At one, it's going to be carboxylic acid. At one, it's going to be carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid. Because the carbon of the carboxylic acid is the not the is not included in the main chain. That's why the suffix used is carboxylic acid here. Right? Otherwise, it would have been oic acid. Okay? Otherwise, it would have been oic acid. Look at the next one. Look at the next one, bicyclo, right? Start with the bridgehead, right? Longer ring, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is bicyclo. It is bicyclo. Now, in the larger size ring, one, two, three, four. In the smaller size ring, one, two. In the middle, shortest path, there is no carbon, four, two, zero, right? So how many total carbons? Eight. So it's oct. Everywhere, it's a single bond, right? Now, at 7th and 8th position, at 7th and 8th position, there are two acid chlorides. But none of the acid chloride carbon is, the, is included in the main chain. So, it's going to be di, di carbonyl chloride. Di carbonyl chloride. Di carbonyl chloride, right? Di carbonyl chloride. I believe it's clear. I believe it's clear, guys. Now, there is one more functional group that is sulfonic acid, SO3H, SO3H. It is at the top of the priority list. It is never used as a prefix. It's always used as a suffix. It is always used as a suffix. It's never used as a prefix. It is having the top priority, top priority, okay? So as a suffix, sorry, wait, I told you the reverse. After carboxylic acid, it is going to be sulfo, okay? So, as a suffix, you'll be using sulfonic. As a prefix, you'll be using sulfo. Carboxylic will be at the top of it. Yes, my bad. So, as a suffix, you'll be using sulfonic acid. As a prefix, you'll be using sulfo. Perfect. Now, have a look. Here, you have not, you do not have to see, basically. Because there is no carbon here. You do not have to see whether carbon is included in the main chain or not. Nothing like that. Okay, nothing like that. Perfect. So as a suffix, sulfonic acid. As a prefix, sulfo. Rest, everything is same. Now you can name anyone. You can name anyone. See guys. This is one. This is two. This is three. So it's probe. Everywhere it's a single bond. So it's ain. Right? It's one. As a suffix, it's going to be sulfonic acid. Sulfonic acid. Now look here. This is one, two, three, four. So first of all, you'll write cyclobutane. Cyclobutane at 1 and 2, it's going to be disulfonic acid. Disulfonic acid. Look at this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, what is going to be? Is it going to be cyclohexane? Cyclohexane, 1, 3. It is again going to be disulfonic acid only. Disulfonic acid. These are basic, basic things, right? Disulfonic acid. Look at this one. Start from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 5, 6. Okay. So, first of all, it's going to be 4, 4, 4, 4, 4 dimethyl. 4, 4 dimethyl. Then it's going to be cyclohexane. At carbon number 1. There is a sulfonic acid, so one sulfonic acid. One sulfonic acid. Look at this one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
एट कार्बन नंबर टू इट्स मीथाइल एट कार्बन नंबर टू इट्स मीथाइल तो टू मीथाइल देन इट्स गुड बी साइक्लो हेक्स साइक्लो हेक्स इट्स गुड बी साइक्लो हेक्स एट कार्बन नंबर वन देर इज डबल बॉन्ड सो वन इंड वन इंड एंड वन सल्फोनिक एसिड वन सल्फोनिक एसिड राइट वन सल्फोनिक एसिड लुक एट द नेक्स्ट वन it's bicyclo start with the bridge head carbon this is the bridge head carbon start from here now larger size ring to be prioritized so 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so first of all you write bicyclo write bicyclo in the larger size ring 1 2 3 4 4 right in the shorter in the shorter path only two carbon atoms in the middle no carbon atoms so 4 2 0 then there are eight carbon atoms so it's oct everywhere single bond octane at carbon number 8 you'll write sulfonic acid you'll write sulfonic acid correct you'll write sulfonic acid yes perfect now the next one <clears throat> now the next one look at this one look at this particular compound it's a spiro one right so start what start from the lesser size ring so one this is two this is three this is four five six seven eight so first of all it is going to be spiro it's going to be spiro right in the smaller size ring one two three in the larger size ring one two three four right in the chain there are eight carbon atoms oct everywhere there is a single bond octane at six there is a sulfonic acid at 6 there is sulfonic acid correct guys now over here you have got carboxylic acid and sulfonic acid which one to be prioritized carboxylic acid right carboxylic acid to be prioritized over sulfonic so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 perfect now here this will be used as a prefix and this will be used as a suffix because it's having more priority right as a prefix at carbon number 3 there is a sulfonic there is a sulfonic group right so as a prefix i'll be using sulfo so 3 sulfo 3 sulfo right 3 sulfo then it's cyclohexane then it's cyclohexane and then at carbon number 1 it is a carboxylic acid the carbon of coh is not the part of main chain so it is carboxylic acid it is one carboxylic acid i hope this is also clear sir 4 sulfo Okay, this is at four. Okay, this is four. Thank you. Done. Done, guys. Is it clear? Is it clear? Is it clear? Now, cyanide group we have discussed. Now there is isocyanide group. N triple bond C. This is your isocyanide group. This is your isocyanide group. For isocyanides, as a suffix, we use the term carbilamine. Carbilamine. As a prefix, we use isocyano. Two things you have to remember. That's it. Carbilamine, isocyano. Carbilamine, isocyano. Carbilamine as a suffix, when it's given priority. As a prefix, isocyano. For the functional group, N triple bond C. right do remember the nitrogen of this functional group will be attached with the main chain if the nitrogen of this functional group is attached to the main chain it's isocyano perfect have a look have a look guys if you look at the first example first example this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five this is six so it is two methyl it is two methyl cyclohexane Two methyl cyclohexane, and at carbon number one, there is a functional group that is isocyanide, right? And as a suffix, we have to write carbilamine. Carbilamine, right? Similarly, call this one, call this two, call this three. So what is it going to be? It is first of all going to be cyclopropane. it is first of all going to be cyclopropane and at 1 and 
there are two functional groups so i'm writing die right i'm writing die as a suffix what do we use we use carbylamine we use carbylamine look at this particular compound it's a bicyclo compound it's a bicyclo compound so both the rings are equal in size right so calling this as one calling this two this is three four five six seven eight nine ten so first of all it's going to be bicyclo bicyclo one two three four one two three four it's four four zero it's four four zero total ten carbon atoms deck everywhere is a single bond so in at three and four at three and four two functional groups so di and as a suffix what do we use carbylamine carbylamine so these are of questions you should be able to do you should be able to do these right look at this one look at this one look at this one it's going to be your homework question look at this one look at this one what should be the name of this one what should be the name of this one carboxylic acid and isocyanide which one to be prioritized carboxylic acid so start from here one this is two this is three this is four this is five this is six perfect so this one to be used as a suffix this one to be used as a prefix in short so at two what do we have at two we have got isocyano isocyano then it's going to be cyclohexane cyclohexane at carbon number one there's a carboxylic acid so it's one carboxylic acid one carboxylic acid why carboxylic acid because the carbon of carboxylic acid is is not the part of the main chain it's not included in the main chain okay it's not included in the main chain perfect okay guys <clears throat> There is one more functional group that is ketone, ketone, right? Ketone. This is your ketone. Right? This is your ketone. This is your ketone. RC double bond OR. Okay? Now, as a suffix, you will be using the term un o n e un right as a prefix you'll be either using oxo or keto you'll be either using oxo or keto guys 10 to 15 more minutes that's all we are done we are almost done we are almost done ketone as a as a suffix will be using own as a prefix will be either using oxo or keto will be either using oxo or keto see now it's simple one two three four five Six. What should be its name? Cyclo. X everywhere is a single bond. Hexane. At one, it's going to be own. Drop the C. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six. So cyclo. Hexane. One comma four dione. 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 This question, keep it as such till I give you the priority list. Till I give you the priority list. Once you get the priority list, then only you can understand. Then only you can understand whether we have to take this one as suffix or this one as suffix. I'm keeping this question as such because I did not show you the priority list yet. Right? I did not show you the priority list yet. First, I'll show you the priority list, then we'll do this question. Okay? Then we'll do this question. Okay, what about the name of these compounds? Look at these two. Look at these two. Quickly. This you should be able to do. I'll show you this one. It is a spiro compound. It's a spiro compound. Start with the lower side. Let's call this as one. This is two. This is three. This is four. Right? This is five. This is six. This is seven. This is eight. So it's first of all going to be one methyl. It's first of all going to be one methyl because over here, it's a methyl group. One methyl. Then it's going to be spiro. Then it's going to be spiro, right? One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So three comma four. Three comma four. 
then eight carbon atoms so oct everywhere single bond right now at carbon number six and seven two two keto groups so it's going to be dione this is going to be the name of the compound perfect perfect guys right by the way are you done with this one are you done with this one what is the name of this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pentane 2, 4, Dione. Right? Pentane 2, 4, Dione. It's simple. Pentane 2, 4, Dione. Now, if you have got the functional group as alcohol, if the functional group is alcohol, then as a suffix all, as a prefix hydroxy. As a suffix all, as a prefix hydroxy. As the suffix ol all as a prefix hydroxy. For example, look at these. This is directly going to be cyclo hexane one all. Drop the C. This is going to be one two. It's going to be cyclohexane one two diol. Right? Yes. The next one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to be 3, 5 dimethyl. 3, 5 dimethyl. 3, 5 dimethyl. Then you'll be writing cyclohexane. Cyclohexane. At 1, it's all. Drop the C. Drop the C. Now here, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is cyclohex. Three in one all drop the C. All these rules we have discussed in detail, right? Guys, I mean, it should not take you now seconds to name these compounds. It should not take you seconds to name the, these compounds. It should not take you seconds to name these compounds. Quickly, what about this one? One, two, three, four. So it's simply going to be but everywhere single bond in it's two comma three. 2 comma 3 diol right now it's a bicyclo one so call this one this is 2 this is 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so it is simply going to be bicyclo it is going to be bicyclo now 440 bicyclo 440 perfect then 10 carbon atoms so deck everywhere single bond so in now at 3 and 4 it's going to be diol Correct? At 3 and 4, it's going to be diol. Look at this one. Look at this one. Even I'm not going to show you this one as well because I have used two different functional groups. I have not given you the priority list yet. Just wait for that. Once you get the priority list, you'll easily understand which one to take prefix, which one to take suffix. And their names as prefix, suffix, you already know. Right? Yes? Yes, Mohammed, you can consult can consult yes easily now guys the last functional group that is thiol sh group instead of oh you have got sh group now thiol as a prefix as a prefix marcepto as a prefix marcepto as a suffix thiol as a suffix thiol as a prefix marcepto right as a suffix thiol as a prefix marcepto now how to name this how to name the compounds look at the compounds i mean you can easily do they are sim similar like your alcohols only okay all right what is going to be the name of this particular compound it's simply going to be cyclo hexane and at one at one it's going to be thiol perfect now before naming this particular compound let me quickly show you the priority list this is the priority list guys Carboxylic acid at the top. Top. After that, sulfonic acid. Anhydrides, esters, acid halides, amides, cyanides, isocyanides, aldehydes, ketones, alcohols, thiols. Right? So, alcohol is given more priority over thiol. Right? Alcohol is given more priority over thiol. 
alcohol is given more priority over thiol so this is one this is two this is three this is four five and six right so this will be used as a suffix this will be used as a prefix so at three it's going to be mars septo at three it's mars septo then you'll be writing cyclo then it's going to be hexane and at one it's going to be all and drop the c right clear clear guys this is important which you have to remember this is important which you have to remember this is important which you have to remember and do remember it from now onwards okay and my dear students with this the first part of organic chemistry is done i am 100% sure you will be able to name any organic compound from now onwards okay you will be able to do that one more thing one more thing today it is is it monday today yes it's monday today tuesday i'm not taking session on this channel thursday thursday at thursday at some 6 or 8 pm there will be solution part 1 and saturday and saturday 6 or 8 pm it will be goc part 2 goc part 2 okay goc part 2 reaction mechanism also will do just wait for it we have just started this was the first session and my motive was to make sure that you should be able to name all the you should be able to name all these i mean organic compounds properly and i think i'm done yeah and right after this session do let me know in the comment section if you really liked this session or not okay perfect wasim sir aap kahan hai abhi i am right now in shrinagar apne ghar pe hi hu main ghar se session le raha hu abhi to ghar se session le raha hu guys everything is clear okay okay sure 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 no issues i'll do it perfect i think this one is left ester huh? ester two functional groups we are left i think did we not discuss anhydride and ester out of 12 functional groups i think we have discussed 10 so two are left these are again the similar type guys okay these are again the similar type only there is nothing like too much in them so over here i have mentioned 12 functional groups out of 12 we have discussed 10 right this one is done this one this one done okay all these are done perfect so basically you got the idea of how to name the compounds that's something which i want okay rest if any functional group is missed you can do that on your own okay perfect chalo with this i'll be taking leave i'll see you all uh on 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 thursday with the chapter solution solution lecture 1 will happen on thursday then again on this particular channel only on saturday it's going to be goc part 2 okay do let me know in the comment section at the end if you actually like the session and the ones who have not subscribed to the channel yet do subscribe to the channel and the ones who have not liked the session yet do like the session as well चलो टेक केयर टाटा बाय बाय